Hello, this is Inside the Press Box with Sunil Sundaraj for the Everyday Fan Sports. Uh, this morning, I'm happy to be speaking with Corey Gardner, uh, recently an assistant coach and recruiting uh, coordinator at Southern Wesleyan University. Uh, once again, Corey, uh, thanks for taking some time out uh, to speak with me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad to be on and uh, excited to talk today. Hey, uh, congrats, uh, I said, on your success as far as, you know, being an assistant uh you know, coach, you know, baseball coach, you know, in uh, college. Uh, can you talk about, you know, again, with uh, your most recent stop here at uh, Southern Wesleyan University and, you know, what you were able to accomplish there, uh, Corey? Yeah, so uh, coming down to Southern Wesleyan was a program that, you know, had historically been, you know, pretty successful. I uh, kind of been in a little bit of a rough patch. Uh, as far as myself, I ran uh, the hitting side and the offensive side of stuff. So, uh, this year, we put together some of the best numbers they put together in school history. Uh, we hit just under 280 as a team. Uh, we also, uh, you know, ex uh, you know, grew exponentially in home runs, triples, doubles. Uh, you know, pretty much every offensive category took some kind of jump. Uh, we limited our strikeouts by a certain amount. So, you know, overall, it was a good year. Uh, it was exciting to see the guys kind of, you know, grow. That's great. Hey, just talk about the process with, um, you know, being able to, uh, you know, land with Southern Wesleyan University here and just what made it the perfect fit uh, for you, Corey? Yes, yeah, so I was down at uh, the University of Rio Grande previously. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the assistant coach got promoted up to the interim. And uh, so it just kind of worked out that he was looking for a hitting guy. Um, some guys that I've coached with, coached against, uh, recommended me to him and uh, just kind of worked out that, you know, uh, some of my past experiences uh, were what he was looking for. And uh, I got the opportunity to go down and join, you know, a beautiful location, uh, central South Carolina. So, you know, the, the baseball in the South is nothing you can complain by, by any <laughs> means. But uh, so just kind of all of it worked out. And, you know, uh, I got to do a lot of great things down there. That's great. Hey, let's just talk about uh, the preparation for a season and just, you know, I said you worked with the offense and with uh, the hitting, you know, I said extensively. Just talk about that. You know, what what went into it, a daily schedule for you, uh, just, uh, you know, from, from morning till night for you, uh, Corey? Yeah, so uh, upon arrival, I tried to get as much video on my hitters as possible uh, just to kind of have something to break down. Uh, over the years, I've kind of put together charts of different drill works, different uh, swing paths and things that I like to look at, to, you know, talk with the guys on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, having, you know, at the Division two level, we only had uh, 17 hitters. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier on my job. Than, <laughs> you know, some of the previous stops where we had over 30 yeah. uh, hitters. But so basically we kind of started out just breaking down, you know, some film taking, you know, just kind of getting an idea of what we need to improve on. Uh, individually and then uh, with that we uh, we did a lot of individual work uh, we did a lot of you know during practice getting cage work in getting drill series in yeah. uh, and then moving into the batting practice you know segments uh, we did that all the way through the fall uh, once that kind of concluded we uh, we went into individual work and then unfortunately we got to pack them up and send them on their way for you know Thanksgiving and Christmas break so yeah. uh, we we're kind of hands off uh, I put together an entire hitting program uh, basically, <clears throat> that maps out every single kind of drill that I want them doing, what the drill concludes, you know, or includes what, uh, what you know, equipment is needed. And uh, I sent that along with every single kid of mapped out how many swings I want them taking each day, everything. Uh, and then once we got back in January, it was, you know, hit the, hit the ground running, trying to include, you know, finish up any kind of preparations. And then it was mostly just getting as many reps and, you know, yeah. as much live action as we could just to kind of prepare for you know, that opening weekend that comes February, you know, the first weekend of February. Yeah, no, it's tremendous. Um, you know, you said you have a, a, a firm blueprint, you know, a set of what, you know, you expect out of the players. I'm wondering, uh, you know, when it comes to those practice and then in-game situations, you know, where, you, you know, on the bench, as far as talking, you know, to, to the hitters, can you just, you know, explain that as well and just talk about that, what those moments entail for you as well, Corey? Yeah. Especially so in game, uh, I started the year out being right next to the dugout, uh, you know, talking to hitters, you know, pre pitch, uh, kind of, you know, after it bats things. Uh, you know, the, the difference between a good hitter and a great hitter is being the adjustability. Uh, good hitters are game to game, um, great hitters are bat to bat, or even, you know, excellent hitters are, are pitch to pitch. 
Um, so, you know, the, the biggest thing is, is if somebody fooled us on pitch, you know, at bat one, we wanted to figure out a way that they didn't fool us on a bat two. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're talking, you know, trying to eliminate pitches, what we can kind of look for, what kind of, you know, cues we can use. Uh, as far as hitters, some guys like internal cues of like mechanical talk before they hit. Other guys like, you know, external cues of finding somewhere on the fence and, you know, trying to drive a baseball in the gap there. Uh, it's just kind of learning your team and learning your guys and, you know, making sure that you can, you know, communicate effectively with them to make sure that you set them up for the best or the best success as far as in game. So uh, the biggest thing that we wanted them to do is, you know, talk through their swing as much as possible in practice. So that way, when it came to game time, they were ready to run and, you know, they were able to feel some things where it wasn't even myself having to say anything. It was them coming up and saying, hey, this is what I felt. Let's fix it now. Yeah. So. We saw a lot of growth. I absolutely loved it. That's great. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to ask you. Just, you know, what made this team, you know, so special to, you know, be part of and just, you know, as assistant coach there as well, uh, Corey. Yeah. So this guy or this group of guys, they uh, they hadn't had somebody that really dedicated themselves strictly to hitting or, you know, the development, stuff like that. So they were really eager to learn. They were really eager to, you know, get some kind of insight, talk with them. Um, you know, and now some of the guys have moved on to other positions of, you know, taking GA roles or taking, you know, uh, being trainers, uh, you know, different facilities and stuff like that. And I still get text messages asking, hey, this is what I got a kid doing. What can I do with him and stuff? So it's pretty <laughs> awesome. You know, it was awesome making those connections and having guys that were really eager to learn and just, you know, uh, really trusting the process. That's the biggest thing I can say is, you know, a lot of guys are kind of weary at first with new coaches and these guys are ready to, you know, jump on and, you know, and, and be full swing with it. So and it made the made the transition really easy for me. So I love this group of guys for sure. That's wonderful. Hey, let, let's talk about, you know, being a recruiting coordinator uh, as well, because, you know, you want to bring in the right uh, – you know, right mix of talent, uh, you know, having people on the same page and having that chemistry. J just talk about that uh, uh, component as well, uh, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. So the biggest thing as a recruiting guy is, you know, and I tell every team that I'm a part of, my goal is to replace you and your goal is, you know, to make it hard for me to replace you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the biggest thing is we want to find the right guys on the field, but also the right guys in the clubhouse. Uh, guys that, you know, uh, aren't cancers, aren't, you know, detrimental to your clubhouse or guys that, you know, are great teammates. Uh, one of the one of the very first questions I ask kids when I talk to them is, what are three things you're good at? What are three things you're bad at? What that tells me is you're realistic, you're down to earth, and, you know, you're able to speak confidently on yourself, which should be the easiest thing. You're with yourself 24-7. Uh, and so, you know, if you, if, you, if you can't say, you know, three things you're good at, three things you're bad at, then, you know, Obviously, uh, obviously, you need to kind of self-reflect and, you know, um, and stuff. So that's one of the first questions I ask, and then just kind of just getting to know them and just making sure they're the right kind of fit for whatever our philosophy and our, you know, game plan is. So yeah. uh, to kind of go along with it after we find out the personality of the kid. I'm, I'm wondering, like, you know, just in terms of uh, uh, communicating that, you know, of course, head coaches and, you know, I said uh, – uh, the staff as well there. I just, I'm wondering how that, you know, developed as well. Like, you know, in terms of, because I'm sure you have to sift through a number of players, you know, I mean, we talk about, you know, college baseball, I mean, being 24, seven, 365, I don't think there's a day off. Yeah. So I'm wondering for you, like, you know, how you were able to manage that. I mean, there's just a lot of multitasking there, but just uh, talk about that, Corey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, multitasking <laughs> is, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing, uh, being married to the game, maybe yeah. number two. Um, you know, I, uh, unfortunately, my family and friends kind of take the back burner because yeah. they forget that, you know, I'm on the ball field or, you know, talking with the recruits. And, yeah. uh, but no, uh, the biggest thing is with the staff is just having, you know, a great communication and, uh, you know, making sure that you guys are on the same page. Yeah. I mean, as far as us, we talk to thousands of kids a year. Um, you know, upwards to, you know, even higher, we're out at events constantly. So it's like we're practicing, trying to get the team ready and being able to flip a switch and go, you know, head out and recruit on a weekend or on a weeknight or whatever it may be. So, you know, just just really managing your time and being able to, you know, efficiently, you know, um, understand what needs to be happening in what order. Um, you know, and having a staff that kind of helps out is the biggest thing. So yeah. uh, there's no success, you know, by doing it yourself. You got to have, you know, it's definitely a teamwork, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even on the coaching staff. So uh, the biggest thing is, you know, just having a clear cut understanding that everybody has a responsibility 
And, uh, you know, everybody has to kind of manage that, um, you know, as a recruiting coordinator at Kentucky Christian at the Rio Grande and then, you know, helping with the Southern Wesleyan, you know, the biggest thing is, is kind of understanding what position needs, understanding what, uh, what the team, you know, kind of looks like in the future and, you know, and, uh, really being able to project out what kids, uh, talent looks like today and what it could look like in the future for, you know, as an incoming freshman all the way to, you know, that junior year that, yeah. you know, you hope they're a key contributor. So, uh, all those things kind of all factor into, yeah. you know, being, uh, being in that kind of role. No, I agree. I mean, you know, you have the administration, you have athletic department. I mean, there's so much, I mean, from top to, you need to have that uh, solid structure in place because if you don't have that, you know, it can quickly, you know, as I said, uh, fall into disarray, uh, Corey. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, that's the biggest thing is, is, you know, it's athletics is a huge part of a lot of universities for, you know, being financially structured, you know, sufficient and, you know, and keeping enrollment up. But at the same time, it's a multi-person or multi-group, you know, effort of admissions, getting the kids in, you know, academics, you know, keeping the kids eligible, getting them in classes, the coaches, you know, kind of being a, you know, a leadership role on the field, but also helping them, you know, being an advisor at the same exact time to, you know, um, there's just so many people that factor into these guys or, you know, these kids at the university level that, you know, it, it has to have great, you know, uh, across the board, you know, leadership to, uh, you know, really make it run efficiently. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm wondering from your uh, perspective, in terms of the recruiting process, how it's changed and, you know, evolved over the years, you know, from your take, uh, Corey. Yeah, so um, social media has been something that's transformed into a huge factor anymore. Uh, Twitter is <laughs> something that, you know, everybody uses yeah. anymore. Uh, kids are tweeting out stats. Kids are tweeting out video. Mm -hmm. uh, coaches are, you know, using that as direct messages. Kids are using it as direct messages. So I would say that, you know, social media has been the biggest change uh, with COVID and kind of rosters backed up and all that stuff. Uh, the transfer portal, unfortunately, a lot of kids weren't able to make it on campus. A lot of kids, you know, kind of what they look like prior to COVID to after COVID, you know, when some kids commit early uh, or, you know, really start looking at schools and stuff, they, you know, a lot more misses, it seems like to happen. And uh, I actually talked with a friend of mine about this yesterday and it was like, you know, a lot of kids got, got in under the limb of what they were, or, you know, or weren't able to be directly seen. And so, you know, there's a, a few more misses where now kids are hitting the transfer portal and they're changing levels and, mm -hmm. you know, changing schools and stuff just because, you know, they ended up at somewhere that wasn't the correct fit. And, uh, you know, it's just there's a lot of things that factor into, you know, making sure that you find the right home for your two years if you go to junior college route or four years uh, for, you know, a university. And it's like, you know, the, the biggest thing is there's a lot of kids that, you know, have that ambition of being, you know, D1 or bus and all that. They may not have the skill set or they may get that opportunity and realize, hey, I'm in way over my head. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to be somebody that, you know, uh, gets to be a contributor for four years. So, you know, they kind of look at moving on. So the transfer portal has definitely been the number two factor, I would say, after, you know, social media, mm -hmm. uh, just because social media is something that continues to grow every day. And, uh, kids are using it more and more, but, um, you know, the biggest thing is, is I still think in the recruiting process, you still got to be able to talk to people. You still got to be able to write a, you know, an email or a text mm -hmm. message, answer the phone, all those things still remain the same. Yeah. Um, so communication is the number one thing that kids have to understand. So no matter what you're, what, what order, you know, what operation you're using to communicate, you got to be able to talk and, you know, be able to, uh, make connections and, you know, build relationships. Yeah, I agree 100% uh, with you. You have to be the overall uh, complete package. You know, I said you just can't be one-sided because, you know, I, I, again, that, that makes such a, you know, immense, you know, difference, you know, said, if, again, if you want to be, you know, at a place for four years. I'm wondering, you know, your experiences at, at Royal Grand and um, Kentucky Christian University, how that shaped you. And then from where you started out at Kentucky uh, Christian University now up to this point, just finishing up here at Southern Wesleyan University, just what, what comes to your mind? Just how much, you know, again, as you've grown into this, these roles and just, uh, just talk about uh, this, uh, this journey here, uh, uh, Corey. Yeah. So the biggest thing was, you know, when I got into coaching at Kentucky Christian University, I thought I, I had quite a bit figured out and I learned quickly. <laughs> there was a lot to learn. 
Um, you know, and that's how baseball is, though. The day that you think you have it figured out, it kind of comes back to show you that, you know, stay humbled or get humbled is my favorite mm-hmm. saying with it. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, I was full of, uh, you know, piss and vinegar uh, very first. And, you know, and they kind of, you know, I kind of learned that there's cer- certain things you can put your energy into and other things that you kind of just got to, you know, just let go just because it's not worth the battles. Um, you know, the biggest thing I learned also was, is, you know, when I got there is, you know, players aren't any different from the high school to the, you know, little league, all of them want to enjoy the game, all of them want to have fun. They want to learn. Uh, but the biggest thing is they, they want to be kids as well. So, yeah. um, you know, it was kind of cool to see, you know, I thought, you know, going into the collegiate level meant that all of a sudden these kids are going to be, you know, something superior to what I had worked with before. And really it was, you know, the same exact things. They had the same exact questions. They, you know, you, you would have thought that they would have been away from mom and dad and they were able to do things on their own. They still called mom and dad for a lot of things, and, yeah. you know? And so, um, you know, so I just kind of learned the, you know, the, to kind of remain with them and, you know, build those relationships and stuff was still the huge thing. Uh, I pride myself in being a player's coach more than anything. So if I can, mm-hmm. You know, if I, if I can be there for them or help them through a process, then that's the best thing I can do. So that's where, you know, at, at KCU, I was kind of, you know, I hate to say it, but I was kind of the guy that was the enforcer, of, you know, rules and, you know, trying to be over the top. And it was like, you know, the, the more stops I've gotten at, I still want to, you know, have structure and have discipline. But at the same time, I would rather be able to, you know, if a kid's having a bad day, I want to, you know, walk up and be like, hey, man, what's going on? Let's sit down and talk. And, and have that, you know, relationship with my players and stuff where at KCU, I kind of, I kind of lost that out just because I was so focused on, you know, the, you couldn't really have that and stuff. And so, you know, I kind of learned from that. I also, you know, as you go to each process, you kind of learn, or each university, each school, each team that you coach at, you learn things that you like and things you don't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you kind of make that into your own hitting or your own coaching plan and, you know, your own coaching personality and stuff. And so I was like, you know, I took things that I learned there. I took things from the University of Rio Grande. I took things from Southern Wesleyan. And, and what it's doing is it's helped molding me into the coach that I want to be one day and, you know, and teaching me what works, what doesn't work, what, you know, what I liked, what I want to teach, you know, going forward, what I don't want to teach going forward. So all those things I think have really helped me, you know, move forward and also make myself into a coach that I'm proud to be one day. That's fantastic. You know, you have such a, unique pathway, you know, towards, you know, I said, uh, coaching in baseball here, especially again at the college and university level. I'm wondering uh, how that all came together at Kentucky Christian University after working, you know, I said uh, several jobs and then being able to land this. Uh, I mean, that, that must, I mean, just talk about, I mean, how exciting that was, you know, when you were able to land that job, you know, there. Yeah. So I, uh, like I said, I coached uh, travel ball uh, from basically when I got out of uh, college, uh, and then I end up opening up my own travel organization. Okay. Uh, I partnered with a guy my first year. So we had teams in Florida, Puerto Rico, and the Midwest. And then after that, I kind of broke off on my own. And, you know, I kind of learned what worked, what didn't work, and mm-hmm. what I wanted to be as an organization. So I named it Impact Baseball just because, you know, uh, Impact kind of meant a special name for me of impacting the kids that I coach and impacting relationships and, you know, uh, impacting, I mean, the life lessons they learned on the field. So. I had Impact Baseball uh, for multiple years uh, until 2021. Uh, I also got a coaching job at my old high school and stuff. So I got to kind of be back there. And, uh, you know, after doing that for a year, I was like, you know, my goal was, you know, I had kind of taken a long way into it. I worked in corporate purchasing for Cummins Diesel Engine. Mm -hmm. I worked for, you know, uh, Southern Glaciers, uh, a beverage company. And then, you know, Frito-Lay, Mike Sells, landscaping. I've kind of done, I've kind of done a little bit of everything. Trick of all trades, But the only right? thing that I look, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so it was like, you know, everything that I looked – or everything I did every day, there's one time I looked forward to, and that was 3.30 in the afternoon when baseball started. Yeah. And so it was like, you know, so I uh, I decided that, you know, I was going to put all my, all my <laughs> business world, all my other, uh, you know, <laughs> real jobs, <laughs> some people call it, on yeah. hold, and I decided to – pursue coaching and so it was the best move I've ever made I uh, you know when I talked to uh, Jason Stowers down at you know KCU and he'd just gotten hired about a month earlier you know we started talking and he hired me it was like you know that was that was the first moment that you know I was talking with my dad and I was like hey I'm actually proud of what I'm doing now and 
and you know, and and so since then, you know, everybody knows when you coach baseball, you don't make money; you do it for your love yeah. of the game and love for the kids and stuff. And that's you know, that's what I can honestly say. I'm proud to you know continue doing, and it just uh, it's definitely been the transformation that I wanted. It's been uh, it's been a lot of highs and a lot of lows, and yeah. you know, moving jobs and all that, and you know, finding out that hey, I get to pack up, and move again. And, or I get to, uh, you know, keep in relation or keep in, you know, talk with uh, a lot of kids that I've had before, you know. So, like I said, it's a lot of highs and lows. But, you know, uh, that first job definitely uh, definitely was a game changer for what I wanted. You know, I'm now doing it three, almost four years. It's it's exactly, well, no, actually longer than four years now. Yeah. Uh, it's exactly, <laughs> exactly what I thought it would be plus more. Like, I never thought it would be what it is. So, I love it for sure. That's super. You know, and what's so impressive that, again, that uh, when you were attending uh, Salem University, the fact that you were able, not only on the athletic side, uh, as an announcer of the basketball games, but also you were a part of, you know, uh, the president, uh, I think of the student at athlete advisory committee, student government senator, school chair for graduate management, admission council. The fact that you were able to, I mean, again, as you talk, you're able to relate to uh, the athletes, you know, on both sides, you know, it's just not about athletics. It's also academics as well. I'm, I'm sure again, that, that really, you know, played a significant factor in terms of like, you know, being able to talk to these kids about both roles, uh, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. So when I was in college, my biggest goal was to, you know, get involved in as many things as possible. So uh, I started, you know, I started out just, you know, getting put on uh, the student athletic advisory committee or SAC as it's known. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically I was, you know, I kind of talked between the, uh, the academic and athletic side of things and the university. And then, you know, I, uh, they brought up student government and I kind of liked being in the leadership role. So I was like, Hey, I'll definitely do that. Yeah. <laughs> sure enough, I got promoted up to president of that. And then, you know, I'm not afraid to talk in front of anybody, as you can tell here. So, uh, so, so I get put on a microphone and get told yeah. to announce every athletic event on campus <laughs> and everything else. So, uh, you know, the biggest thing was, you know, I thought the, the best thing to do was get involved. Uh, it made mm -hmm. my four years at Salem 10 times better just because, you know, I tell kids, hey, if you're at a small school and don't like something, do something about it. Yeah. And that's exactly what I tried to do. Um, you know, I wanted to make I want to leave my mark on the university uh, for somebody else that's coming in the future. And uh, and so, you know, my goal was is what it was when I came in. I wanted to make it better and I wanted to, you know, build relationships with faculty members, but also the students and, you know, be be a kind of person on both sides. So that way also, you know, as I went into life and, you know, everything else, I could, you know, I could learn how to talk to every range of people from, you know, people that are involved in, you know, uh, you know, the higher up, you know, Fortune 500 companies to all the way to the people that, you know, are blue collar people that, you know, uh, make things work in America. So, you know, uh, that was my goal when I got into college was is I didn't care what major you were. I didn't care what your background was. I want to learn how to, you know, uh, talk and I want to build a relationship with you. I want to get to know you and I want to, you know, know you on a personal basis. And, that's what's really helped me as a recruiting coordinator also is, is you know, I, I kind of learned how to, you know, make some kind of connection, uh, you know, either what or no matter what it was just to, uh, you know, kind of set ourselves up to, you know, get the best talent possible on the field, but also the right kind of kid with us. So, yeah, no, that's terrific. Hey, just have a couple more. I love Corey. Can't thank you enough for the time. I, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, especially uh, something popped into my head with COVID, you know, kids lost a lot of time, you know, after that. I mean, it, it was hard, especially when you talk about the, the seniors, uh, whether it be in high school or college, uh, just talk about, you know, uh, I mean, the resiliency. I mean, you know, you had to deal with it as well. And like, you know, other kids said, just talk about that. Yeah, no, um, the kids that made it through COVID and made it through homeschool and, you know, internet school and all these other things, I give them the most credit in the world. I couldn't do it. I mean, as you can see here by everything I've done in the past and all the <laughs> different positions I held, I don't yeah. sit still well. Yeah. So when it comes to, you know, sitting at a computer, having to sit down and, you know, do, you know, do strictly your work without yeah. having or being able to go hang out, with, you know, friends, family, all these things that I give kids credit that made it through. Um, you know, the only thing was, is, you know, it, it really showed the kids that were dedicated, um, the kids that found ways to work out, found ways to get their reps in, you know, kind of kept active with it. Um, you know, 
as a recruiting guy, as a guy that's kind of been in multiple different states, that was a that was a time that I watched a lot of kids turn their back on the the athletics that they were a part of. Uh, they decided they went out and found other things, and you know, kind of gave up baseball, gave up whatever else it was. Um, you know, we had some kids that were committed, and they decided to hang it up because they found out that baseball wasn't everything. And then we had other kids that were dying to get on campus because they found out baseball was, you know, everything. Yeah. Um, COVID definitely uh, definitely changed the the recruiting process as well for a lot of kids. Uh, it created that backlog, like I talked about earlier. But it also, you know, made it a lot harder for kids or, you know, kids and coaches to kind of connect to kids to get on campus and see, you know, schools and make sure they're finding the right fit. And it's also a lot harder for coaches to get out and see kids to make sure they're mm-hmm. finding the right fit, yeah. um, you know seeing face-to-face, you know, talks and, you know, all those things really matter a lot more and kind of, you know, transpire into, you know, making sure that, you know, what the kid is going to be like when he's on campus with you, how well he can talk with coaches, professors, everybody else, you know, around the school, how they act, how they interact with mom and dad, they treat them with respect, all those things matter. And uh, so COVID really kind of, kind of threw a, you know, a a wrench in that as well. So, um, you know, like I said, I think it'll take a few years and it'll start to kind of way back out and kind of even out a little bit. But, um, you know, COVID was COVID was a, a thing that definitely uh, definitely made the baseball process a lot harder on a lot of kids. But the yeah. kids that made it through, I can tell you, they've they've accomplished something that, you know, that they should be proud of for sure. Because, I mean, like I said, a lot of a lot of people, I can say me as being one of them, I don't know how well I could make it. So, yeah. so but. <laughs> That's true. Hey, you talked about uh, the love of the game for uh, baseball. I'm just wondering uh, any other, uh, you know, things that stand out, you know, whether it's a practice or <clears throat> during the course of a game that you just sit there and you just, you know, all like, you know, say, wow, they, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you've been doing it for a long time, you know, in terms of yeah. coaching, but just some of the you know, tendencies that stand out to you, uh, Corey. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if you look at my Twitter, like I try to, you know, help out guys that I coach as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, some of the guys are now in the college summer league that I'm coaching up here. Uh, some of the best, uh, best things for me, you know, outside of game time is, you know, when uh, when I get to see those guys, you know, make it to their dream school or make it to the level. Um, you know, I, I helped a, a couple of kids get to, you know, uh, with my travel organization, we had eight guys sign at different, you know, different varying levels. Uh, so, you know, getting those calls, getting invited to the signing, you know, ceremonies, whatever it may be, uh, talking to them, you know, down the road of, you know, of how things are going. You know, those are those are the, you know, the things that I love. Uh, I tell every kid that I coach, you know, my goal is for you to call me 10 years down the line and say, hey, hey I'm getting married once you're here. Or, hey, I had my first kid. Here's a picture, you know, all this stuff and just, you know, keep me up to date. Uh, in your life and stuff that's the uh, that's the things that you know really stand out to me that I love more than anything that yeah. you know I built some kind of relationship with them that they want to take for a lifetime uh, as far as on the field and practice you know seeing that light bulb click when things start to you know start to work out for kids you know it's like that aha like hey there it is uh, moments you know some of the kids have never heard some of the things that we try to put together or try to do as a staff or try to do as a program. And so it's like once it finally clicks and it starts working and they see the results, um, you know, that's exciting for me. Uh, in game, I love to see success. I also love to see when it's like, hey, when I make that mistake, I see the growth of, you know, the, the guy that instead of being, you know, down and throwing his glove and all that stuff, he, you know, he taps his chest and says, that's on me. I'll make the next one for you. And, just sees personal growth. I mean, baseball's full of life lessons. Baseball's full of, yeah. you know, a lot of a lot of different things. That's why it's the greatest game in the world. That's why I love it so much and dedicated my life to it and stuff. And, uh, you know, so the biggest thing is, is just understanding the, or, you know, seeing the growth in guys and seeing, you know, the, who they were as a, as a young, you know, freshman to who they are as a senior, or even guys that were a senior this year to seeing who they were at the end of the year. Um, you know, one of the kids I had this year, he came up and gave me a hug on senior day and he said, thank you. And he said, you know, I felt more growth and felt like I made, you know, made strides in the right way of who I want to be next year when I'm out of school uh, this year. And, you know, so just seeing those guys, you know, just just makes what I do so much better. Yeah. A hundred percent. So, yeah, no, that's fabulous. Hey, uh, uh, you talked about family before, and you talk about, I mean, it's its a grind. You know, I said you, a lot of time spent away. Just talk about, uh, 
you know, what they've meant to you here and just in terms of support, you know, throughout this, uh, this journey, uh, Corey? Oh, yeah. So, uh, my dad's my biggest supporter. Um, growing up, I don't I can name five games that he's ever missed, uh, which you know is pretty awesome to have. Uh, he made my first college game, all that stuff. He actually I gave him my first ever you know game ball that I got, and recording the last out and stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, that still sits on his dresser at home. So uh, my dad's been my you know my biggest role model, my biggest supporter. Um, you know, my dad was a business guy. Uh, was one of the highest uh, higher up people at Cummins and all this stuff. And so when I told him that, hey, I'm, I'm going to pursue something other than, you know, the business world and, and all this stuff, it was like, you know, at first he was a little weary. He's, you know, worried about all the all the things that every parent worries about. But, uh, you know, overall, I mean, he uh, he tracks, he watches every game on live stream. And, you know, he sits there and sees me walking to the third base coach's box he sees me <laughs> and, and during the game he texts me and all this stuff so um you know so you know even if he's not there just because you know where I'm urged, like from is about eight hours away from where I coached this year and stuff you know he's he's checking in every game and texts me on stuff uh, my aunt uncle they came in my sisters have you know all checked up on me all this stuff so I mean, even though I don't get to talk to them as much or see them in person as much, every single one of them, you know, stands behind. And, you know, if you, if you don't have family or the right kind of support with you, then, you know, it uh, it makes it definitely a lot harder, especially living in areas that, you know, when you move to originally, you don't know anybody. And, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, I couldn't, I could definitely couldn't do it without them. They mean the world to me. And, you know, that's why as soon as I had an off weekend this weekend, I, I packed up and, I'm up here excited to see him all this weekend. So that's fabulous. That's great. Hey, uh, Corey, before you get the last word, uh, uh, I was wondering what, uh, you know, your advice, your message would be, uh, you know, to, to those younger kids out there, athletes, but also uh, people who are trying to break into the coaching ranks as well. I mean, it said uh, you definitely have to pay your dues, but, and, uh, you know, in order to, to move up the ladder, but just uh, what would you say to them out there? Yeah. So if, if this is your dream, uh, you know, you can't be afraid of no. Um, you know, I've been told no more times than I've you know, you know ever uh, ever could imagine. I've been told no on jobs, on recruits, on ideas, on all kinds of things. And, and if that's something that, you know, terrifies you or turns you away, then this isn't the profession for you. Uh, if this is your dream, if this is your goal, um, you know, you got to keep, you know, be persistent. You can't, you know, can't turn your back on it. Um, you got to have dedication and hard work and, you know, understand that one day you're going to make it. Um, the biggest thing is, is if this is your dream also, um, you know, I have a lot of kids that tell me that, hey, I want to go play ball and I get an offer, you know, 10 hours away from home. And they'd say, uh, yeah, no. Um, it's like, well, I, I hate it that, you know, uh, that school is not closer to home. But if this is your goal or this is your dream, then sometimes it takes you a little bit away. Uh, you got to be willing to go wherever it is and, you know, and achieve that. Uh, sometimes you get to transfer back. Sometimes you get a new job back close. But, you know, if, if this is your goal, then there's no place too far. There's no place, you know, for too little pay. Um, you know, you, you find ways to work, uh, to make it work and stuff. And so, you know, the biggest thing is be dedicated and make it, you know, make it your dream and your goal. And, you know, don't be afraid to know. That's the biggest thing. Great. Okay, uh, Corey, you get you get the last word here. Uh, just message, you know, I said for, um, you know, family, friends, uh, former, you know, I said athletes, coaches, colleges, universities. Uh, I, I give you the floor, Corey. Yeah. No, the biggest thing is, like I said, friends, family, I couldn't do it without them. Uh, I, love, I love the people that's in my life. Uh, I love, you know, what I do. Um, you know, each job that I've had, each school that I've had has taught me a lot of lessons uh, from the guy that I was back in college to now. I don't, I don't think anybody would have thought I would be what I'm doing or who I am today. <laughs> um, you know, I actually think my old athletic director told me that the other day that, you know, he was proud of me and never thought that this is who I'd be. So, uh, yeah. you know, without them, I, I couldn't be here. Um, you know, I, I love what I do. I love talking to people. So anybody Anybody that has questions always can, you know, feel free to reach out. It may be a little bit slow, but, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without this game and, you know, without uh, everybody that's in support and especially without, you know, um, without what I, what I, you know, had the goal to do. And, and uh, you know, so I'm excited to see where I end up next, like I said, and, 
Uh, I can't wait to continue making relationships and seeing seeing players, family, and friends all grow. So, well said. Hey, uh, Corey, just an incredible honor and privilege being able to interview you. Thank you so much, and again, uh, congrats on your success. And again, wishing you uh, all the best. You know, said uh, you know in, in your next uh, position. Absolutely, I appreciate it, Tom. Like I said, and I uh, love connecting with you. And you know, once again, social media could bring us another connection in and. Uh, you know, I appreciate you bringing me on and hopefully we get to do this again sometime. Thank you.